You have been screwing all wrong. Let's talk about it. This may look like a Phillips, but it's definitely not. A Phillips and a JIS, a Japanese industrial stand. Two screwdrivers, a tail as old as time. Well, as old as screwdrivers are anyways. Long time ago in a land far away, there were two screwdriver rivals. One was the Phillips, American made. The other, Japanese industrial standard, also known as the JIS. And as you probably guessed, made in Japan. Phillips was vastly popular in America where it was invented. And likewise, the JIS was super popular in Japan. So much so that Japan made it their national standard. As you guessed by the name, the Japanese industrial standard. They were like the Romeo and Juliet of the screwdriver world, except without the tragic ending. And there probably wasn't as much sex. Now to the untrained eye, these screwdrivers look the same. I mean, if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, it's a Phillips screwdriver. In the beginning of the assembly line production, the flathead, also known as the slotted screw, dominated the industry. Now when you're using an electric screwdriver and you're going to drive the fastener, the end of the slotted screwdriver has a tendency to come out. If you use a flathead screwdriver with an electric drill, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Even with a hand screwdriver, the bit still has a tendency to come out. So there was a problem and a Mr. Thompson stepped up to the plate to solve this problem. What did he come up with? He came up with a self-centering screw known as the Phillips. Now another added bonus of this self-centering screw is that instead of over tightening it, the screw would cam out. It has curved edges. Now on an assembly line, it is preferred to cam out the screw as to over tighten it. So the curves right here did just that. They caused the screw to cam out instead of over tightening. Now this design was actually created in the 1930s by Mr. Thompson. It was sold to a Mr. Phillips hence the name Phillips, who is credited to its widespread use. <laughs> we know assembly lines weren't the best condition back then, so a self-centering screw was essential for these sleep-deprived workers. Now, any sleep-deprived workers, or even children back in the day, could blindly insert the screwdriver into the hole, and it would self-center, and you just twist away. Again, with a flathead or a slotted this just wasn't very feasible. And again, everything was made on assembly lines from airplanes to cars. And this Phillips screw became widely popular during the World War II era. 1937 was when the first major corporation, Cadillac, decided to use the Phillips. So, in the 1950s, you're a Japanese engineer. America has this great fastener. How do you improve it? Let me show you. The JIS fastener. Now this design was so superior that they had to mark it differently. So how do they mark these bolts to show that it's a JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard Fastener? Easy. That's their trademark. The JIS was created in the 1950s in, you guessed it, Japan. The JIS screw was designed to be tighter and more precise than the Phillips, so Japanese engineers had to come up with a new kind of screwdriver to go with the screw. And that's where the JIS screwdriver comes in. Again, it's designed to fit more precisely into both the JIS and the Phillips, and it's got a sharper point and a flatter tip. And let me tell you, the tip does make all the difference. And as far as torque goes, the Phillips is designed to cam out. So it's the screw that limits the torque that's able to be applied. The JIS, on the other hand, due to its design, it allows the user to control how much torque they wish to apply to the fastener. Now this fastener, it was actually so good Japan adopted it as the national standard. That's pretty impressive.
Here we have the GIS fastener by the GIS screwdriver, and then we have the Phillips fastener by the Phillips screwdriver. Now granted, there's a little bit of exaggeration with the angles and everything, but this is to show the main differences. As you'll notice, the Phillips has more curves, again, to promote that cam out, while the GIS is sharper edges designed to grab. One of the benefits of the GIS is it allows the user to control the torque applied to the fastener and it's not the screwdriver making that decision. Here I'm showing a side-by-side -side of the comparison of the looseness of the GIS versus the Phillips. And this is a Cobalt brand American made Phillips number three with the GIS number three. And as you saw the GIS three was tighter inside the fastener and that was a Phillips fastener. So right here I wanted to get some data on the actual torque that can be applied with the Phillips and the GIS with the corresponding fasteners. First, I tried a bolt with a lock washer. <laughs> Didn't work. Then I tried a bolt with a Loctite. And as you can see, <laughs> that didn't work. So what's next on the agenda? Let's use a JB Weld steel stick and see how that goes. And at this point we have barely worked up to 15 foot-pounds of torque. <laughs> and there you go. Broke that bolt. So now we tried welding the bolt. We welded the bolt to the nut, to the lock washer. <laughs> this is the last shot I'm giving it. I also tried some JB Weld epoxy in the middle of this and I was not able to get it to work either. I broke the head off the bolt too. So again, this one I used my welder and I welded the bolt to the nut, to the washer, And the bowl didn't survive. You know, sometimes righty tidy just turns into righty loosey. Nothing you can do about it. So we tried to run some tests. We really did. But as you saw, we welded it. We used lock nuts. We used Loctite. We used JB Weld. We used super glue. We used epoxy. We used lock washers. <laughs> and we just didn't have any luck. So we tried really hard to get some good data. The GIS screwdriver and the GIS fastener both outlasted the test. The GIS screwdriver and the Phillips fastener both outlasted the test. The Phillips screwdriver and the GIS fastener both outlasted the test. But then whenever we used the Phillips on Phillips, after 15 foot pounds, it did what it was designed to do. It cammed out. So really some of the only good takeaways we have from this, GIS on GIS works great. GIS on Phillips works great. Phillips on GIS works great. All work better than a Phillips on Phillips. Moral of the story, the GIS is a better fastener. It has been redesigned and I guess you could say it puts more control in the user's hands. This is Octane Restorations. Thanks for watching the video. Now, since you're more educated, go forth and screw freely.